please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. But let's discuss the rupee, uh, the bond yields, and you know all the uh, the macros that have worsened. Abhi Barua, the chief economist at HDFC Bank, joins us on the phone line to talk about that. Abhi, hi, good morning. I don't know where to start because all the macros are worsening day by day. But uh, what's the sense you're getting on the rupee itself? Um, uh, well, yeah. you know, it's very difficult to uh, predict. Uh, you know, some kind of a level of the rupee at this stage. Um, we are in the middle of a crisis, and unfortunately, I think. Um, uh, we don't seem to sort of um, put adequate emphasis on the fact that it is a crisis and we shouldn't be talking down the rupee too much. But in effect, the combination of the RBI sort of keeping its hands off and some of the uh, kind of statements or comments that have come from government officials seems to suggest that we are sort of welcoming this with arms wide open, which doesn't help our case. So uh, I, you know, I can't talk about terminal value. I think there is a, you know, depreciation bias. There is momentum, and we'll just have to see where it takes us. Okay. Actually, Abhik, I can inform you that the yields are also misbehaving. I mean, provided, of course, you have been long on bonds. Eight o two is the first uh, trade on the ten-year yes, bond. Yes, I was yes. under the impression eight would be a bit of a roof. You think even this right. one goes higher? Yes, we had a uh, we we have a call of 820 actually, so I think with the rupee in free fall and the consequent uh, um, you know impact on inflation, coupled with the fact that we have bunched up paper supply coming in, uh, I, I think the possibility of yields tightening um, um, further is there, and uh, I think the RBI feels constrained to uh, do open market operations because uh, adding liquidity is not supportive of uh, the rupee. So to the extent that they can sort of have an influence on the rupee, they are doing it through the um, liquidity route, which means that uh, there is really no you know, sucker for uh, bonds uh, for some time now. Because, uh, you know, clearly the rupee fall got triggered domestically by the uh, July trade deficit, which came in at 18 billion. Yes. Uh, yes, and at yes. that time, a lot of economists were arguing that in RER 36 country trade weighted terms, the rupee was overvalued. But yes. since that day, when we got the uh, uh, you know July number, uh, right. the rupee has depreciated. So now, do you think it's depreciated enough? And now the RBI will put up a strong defence. I would think so. I think even if you go by you know the most crude RER calculations, between 71 and 72, you're roughly close to the fair value. I, I don't buy into the RER calculation as, as, as a measure, but that's a different issue. But it should, uh, you know, the, 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 the overvaluation should, uh, should be correcting almost completely now. And maybe the RBI will step in. But in the absence of any communication and, uh, you know, this impression that we've got from some, you know, quarters of our policy establishment that this is something to be you know, welcomed, uh, and this is doing us more good than harm. Uh, it's, it's, it's led to, you know, some amount of jitteriness. And the fact is that we are in the middle of an emerging market crisis, mm. and we are getting up, beaten up more than a lot of the others. Mm. Uh, so uh, we don't seem to have either a plan to replenish our reserves or to, you know, in the, you know maybe a rate hike is on, on the cards. I really don't know. But as of now, that's too much of a hands-off approach, which I'm not comfortable with. So, uh, I mean, you briefly mentioned the rate hike. Are we looking at one more front-loaded rate hike because of the issues that we just spoke about? And if that comes through, what kind of a toll would it have on private consumption expenditure? Because, you know, when this when this happened in FY14, three successive rate hikes, there was right. a collapse of private co consumption expenditure. Uh, do you see something of that sort play out this uh, time? Uh, yes. I, I, you know, more broadly, I would think that uh, you know, this kind of uh, depreciation when oil prices are moving up uh, is, um, you know, I mean, it's self-contractionary. And the possibility of offsetting it through exports is limited because global trade is contracting and we have issues such as protection, um, you know, which are very much uh, alive and burning. Uh, so it, 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 if there is a rate hike and that's sort of the textbook defense, for the currency, then it would hurt private consumption. It could hurt the sort of the nascent investment uh, 
uptake that we've um, you know noticed in the last two quarters GDP data. So uh, all I would say is that it, it would be contractionary, whether it's mildly or l highly contractionary is something that we'll have to see. But certainly it will have, I think, the, the, to, to cut a long story short, I think the cost of this depreciation, given the other factors, are much more than the benefits that are being claimed uh, by, by various people. Okay. All right. Uh, I take your point that, you know, uh, we are in a slippery slope once uh, the uh, Reserve Bank by its walk and the government by its talk says that they welcome a falling rupee. But uh, I, I guess the Reserve Bank has uh, 400 billion plus reserves, 425 billion, right? Yeah. In last count uh, uh, to make a difference when it wants to make a difference. Thank you very much, Abhik Barua. But even as you speak, uh, it's gotten worse for the rupee. It's 0.15% down now. Uh, 7131.